So yeah, I'm Grant, the big G. Some of you know me, some of you don't. But the question I'm asked the most is, how do I get so much done? So for those that don't know, I'm the director of an architect's practice. And yes, it's an award-winning practice and blah, blah, blah. And we do loads of work up and down the country and we're very, very good. I also own a major B2B events company. I also own a speed dating company, which is a bit of a weird one, which just plugs in quite well. I'm an investor and I, I get around a lot. And the question is, how do you get so much done? So I've done this talk a few times in different variations, but I've sort of whittled it down to five things that I think are key to anybody getting the most done. The first one, surround yourself with the best people. And everybody always knows and go, yes, that's right. Well, yes, that is right. We all know that. But how many of us actually do it? How many of us actually think to ourselves, are my staff the best? Are my staff doing as good as I hope they are? Are my staff filling the gaps that I'm creating? And if not, what am I doing about it? How am I helping them to become the best? When I network, am I networking with the best people? Or am I wasting my time? My colleagues, are they the best? My suppliers, I'm going to tell you a quick story actually, my suppliers. My printer, or my ex-printer, screwed up last week. And it wasn't a big screw up, but it cost me half a day. But that's half a day of my time because he screwed up. So he's obviously not the best, because if he was the best, he wouldn't screw up. So he's no longer with me. So you see, with my contractors in the architect architecture firm, if they're not the best, they're wasting my time because I'm having to plug their gaps. Does that make good sense? So <laughs> actually think about everybody in your world, in your sphere. I noticed something interesting happened when I launched my, my, my first practice well, about six years ago. A few of my friends started to have that little green monster. Now these people weren't, for any other reason other than, well, little green monster, a little bit of envy, started pulling me down a little bit, started making little comments, taking little digs, or limiting me by their aspirations or how far they could see or how big they could go. I remember actually one of my mentors who had helped me as a, a young student of architecture, he was limiting me by his aspirations. He was telling me the type of work I should be doing because that's all he could envisage, not what I could envisage. So, and I'm not saying get rid of those friends. I'm saying just take them out of that world. I'm still friends with these people. I just don't talk business with them. I just don't talk about my business with them because they can't understand it. And to a an certain extent, family as well. Because family will more likely than for any other reason, it'll be their fear. It'll be their fear because they're worried about you and they will try to limit you. So take them out of the world. And I don't mean get rid of them. I just mean, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, there you go. <laughs> don't mean it like that. <laughs> I just mean on the business level, if they ask, it's great. And leave it that. Point two. And this is one that I have to work on. The only thing you can truly control is your own reaction. It's the only thing you have control over. It is very, very easy to get down on things. Very, very easy to, like, over the last six, eight weeks, I've been getting it from every angle. Um, just a run of, I talk about luck. I don't actually really believe in luck. I just use it as a turn of phrase. A run of bad luck. Uh, for example, we lost two jobs in about 15 minutes of each other. Cost about 12 grand's worth of fees. And you think to yourself, shit, there's 12 grand. Just gone. And I've sat, and the calls come in the office. Wow, that's, that's, a, that's a kick, but took about 30 seconds. Warmed myself up, I smiled, went, stuff it. What is the worst that'll happen? We've got enough work on, we're not gonna not be afford to pay the staff, not afford to pay the bills. I went out and told my team. And what I found is that my team took influence from my personality and my confidence and my positivity. And everybody around me, I find, I can influence them. And it's funny, when I go networking, and you always meet this person networking, and they usually stand in the corner and you go, oh, hi, what do you do? They go, oh, I'm a printer, something like that. They go, oh, how's business? It's okay. Go, okay, bye-bye, and just walk away. From, yeah, I'm, I'm not quite that cruel, but you know something, if he's going to be negative and down on it, fine, but he's not going to pull me down. Positivity is such an important thing, because it's bloody hard, and we all know it's hard. Just keep your chin up, 
it's such an important thing. Point three, and this is a technically type one. This is one you can actually apply yourself, and I think we all do it quite well, but just to think about it more and more. Are you making your work work hard? So just think about, and this is how, when Brad introduced me about how I get everywhere. So we're quite good at social media. We, we learned it. It's a learned skill. I'll, I'll talk more about this in a second, but it's just a learned skill. If we are out on site digging a foundation or something, I take a photo of it, I stick it on social media. If we're doing a design, I take a photo of it, stick on social media. If, say last week, we won the design of a, a new church in Manchester, I put it on social media. People like to hear about it. People like to talk about it. People like to listen to it. And a lot of people say to me, oh, I can't think of the content that I need for social media. Content is crap. It doesn't really matter. It's actually presence. It's continued presence. That's the skill, just all. And Brad's brilliant at this. Here's Brad walking along the side of a canal. Dem ones, shizzle. <laughs> <laughs> but it's brilliant. And you see it all the time. And people are engaging and people are listening and people are, you know, and it gives him a presence and it gives him a following. And, and I watched how other people did social media and I watched it. Actually, they're not putting that much into it. <coughs> a little th- in fact, I'll, I'll share something that I found which worked a treat. I used to put together these beautiful rendered images of our pictures, of our projects, and put them up. And nobody would like them. Nobody would share them. I used to get really frustrated with it. And one day, I shared, you see it quite a lot, a picture on LinkedIn. It's a picture of a man's face, all tanned. I have no idea who he was. I think he was some reverend from California. And some little stupid inspirational quote. And I just uh, like and share. or I think it's like and whatever it is on LinkedIn, I've engaged with it. Overnight, four or five other people who went, oh, very good, shared, shared. Why the hell is this guy's <laughs> ugly mug getting shared and my beautiful ones aren't? So as a joke, I took a photo of my own picture, my face. And I wrote some inspirational comment, <laughs> live for the moment, or something really just saccharine, and stuck it up. Over the next couple of days, there was 20 people that liked it and shared it. I was, I was actually doing this almost ironically, but I actually bought into this and went, okay, if this is what works, this is what works. Stick, try it yourself, stick your mug on it. Put a bit of text on it and just let, let it go, and people absolutely love it. And you can regurgitate it with six months, share it again. The same people, <laughs> <laughs> the same people won't realise they shared it last time. <laughs> I've made a living on that basis. Exactly. Well, I've been watching you do it. Then. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so. But make your work work harder. So if you're, let's say you're a cake maker and you're mixing up the batter, take a photo of it. You can share it in a matter of seconds. People like to see that sort of stuff. People like to engage with it. They like to see. We, we find with the, with the architect's practice, the behind the scenes stuff gets more engagement than the finished stuff. So when we're out you know, taking photos of the steel work and what have you, people love to see that. The actual finished product, not the first one. We find with the biz expos, the night before, I often, I generally try to take a photo of it before everybody's arrived and say, always say the same thing, the quiet before the storm. People are more engaged with that than the next day when there's people running around and everything. And it's a really weird, I don't know exactly why, I just know that this is what happens. So make your work work harder. Everything you do, think, how can I repurpose it? How can I reuse it? Because you've done the work once. Maximise the value out of it. Point four. And this, <coughs> every, I'm going to say this and everyone's going to go, yes. But actually, do you? Invest in yourself. Everybody goes, yes, I do. <laughs> you do. Do you honestly, hand on heart. Sorry, I've hit your mic. Do you want me to do it again? <laughs> okay. Do you honestly invest in yourself? Some do. Actually, I'll tell you who do. The really, really successful ones. The ones who are really flying. The ones who write into their day, I'm going to sit down for half an hour and I'm going to read this. And I'm going to make notes on it. And most importantly, I'm going to use what I've learned. I meet loads of people who go, oh, I've read this book, I've read that book, I've read this book, and I've read that book. But I just can't seem to get this working. I said, you're reading the stuff? Are you doing the stuff? They go, well, well, what do you mean? They go, it's a simple enough question. You, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. You can go do all the courses in the world, but if you don't go and do it, then it's not going to work. And this is one of, the, one of my favorite things. And this is why, actually, these business growth courses work really well. And I've done them, and I'm a massive fan of them. Because they hold people accountable. Personally, I'm a big believer of, if you need to be held accountable, you maybe shouldn't think about being at the top of the 
to change yourself. <laughs> um, if you need to, you know, <laughs> but you know what? Fair is fair. Everybody wants to have their own business. Go for it. You go and they go, by next week, I'm going to make 50 calls. And they go away. And you know, the same thing happens every blinking week. The day before, they go, oh, I've got to go to this tomorrow. And they're making their 50 calls. And they go, in. but they're getting stuff done. And because they're active, they get more responses. Because a lot of the time, it's just a numbers game. The more you do, the more wins you'll have, the more success you'll have, the more you do. If you sit and do nothing, you can be pretty much sure you're not going to have a win. So it's just a numbers game. So for a lot of people, that being held accountable by somebody else, whether it's a mentor, whether it's a growth system, whether it's a, if it works for you, works for you, great. But invest in yourself. And that's probably the biggest key to my success. Even now, I still allot a large portion of our marketing budget as my personal investment. I drive up and down the country. I sit in the rooms with some of the best people. I, came, I actually see coming here as being my own investment in myself, to sit in the room with all you guys, because it's sort of self-selecting. If you guys have all made the effort to come here, good chances you're all decent guys. You're not, for want of a better word, dickheads. You know, that's <laughs> the best way to put it. I'm you're investing wrong. in yourself. I know, but I'm a gentle soul. <laughs> so yeah, so invest in yourself, but take your investment and actually use it. Actually use what you've learned, actually push forward with it. Finally, point five. And this is my mantra, four little words. Move fast, hit hard. And this is something that I always think of as like a rugby player back in school. I went to a rugby playing school, you can tell I'm a bit of a posh boy. I'm not really, I, wasn't, I didn't fit in, but played rugby. <laughs> move fast, hit hard, move fast, hit hard. I meet so many people who are busy getting busy. They're not actually doing anything. They're writing lists. They're ri I can write a business plan in a couple of hours. I meet people who take six months writing a business plan. And I'm sort of going, what have you got to write about? You know, do it. Just blink and do it. Move fast, hit hard. Move fast, hit hard. If you get knocked down, get up and push forward. If you make a mistake, you know, put a line through it and push forward. Don't dwell on it. Don't stick to it, just keep going forward. As long as you're always a little bit further forward, you're always winning. Even if you've made mistakes, there's no shame in making mistakes. There's nothing wrong with them. I've made the same mistake over and over and over and over. At some point, I'm gonna go, Grant, you need to stop making that mistake. But you know what? Move fast, hit hard. It is such a simple thing. I said to all my staff, don't procrastinate. If it's a real nasty job, hard job, tough job, just get into it because it's gonna be all the harder when you've sat and thought about it for three or four days and then still have to do the work. So just grab it by the throat and take care of it. Move fast, hit hard. And I think that is, in a very, very quick thing, is the five best things I can tell anybody on how to get as much done as I do. Smile, be a chat, join for